Okay, let's take a look at heart physiology and looking at the mechanisms and events of contraction. Now, let's look at means of stimulation. Now, some of the cells in the heart are what we call autorhythmic. These are cells that are self-excitable and initiate their own car, uh, contraction. Now, only about 1% are this are, are cells that are autorhythmic. The rest of them are contractile fibers, all right? And so these autorhythmic cells are gonna send an impulse out to the rest of the heart. Now, once again, uh, the heart is, at, is basically an organ unit that functions in sitium. So uh, the cardiac muscle cells, they uh, contract as a unit or they don't contract at all. And once again, this is done through those gap junctions, already talked about that. So looking at energy requirements, cardiac muscle has a lot of mitochondria in it, uh, about 25% of the cell, so it's a lot. It has a greater dependence on oxygen than skeletal muscle cells. Uh, and there's little to no anaerobic respiration that occurs here because we don't want the buildup of lactic acid. Uh, it can use glucose and fatty acids for energy use. If we have an ischemia, an ischemia is an area that lacks oxygen. Um, so like what would happen during a heart attack. So uh, because uh, that area is not getting oxygen, what's gonna happen in those cells uh, is they're gonna do anaerobic respiration. That's the only way they can get energy. Uh, that's gonna produce lactic acid, and so the acidity within those cells are gonna build up, and that's actually gonna interfere with AP, ATP production. And what's gonna happen here, interestingly enough, is those, the gap junctions from those cells are gonna close to wall off that acidity just to that cell. And so that electrically isolates those damaged cells. Uh, and so if this is a large area, that's what we call a heart attack. All right, let's look at the typical cardiac conduction system. Now the ability of cardiac muscle to contract is intrinsic. It's a property of the heart, all right? So it doesn't need some outside stimulus. All right. Now, an outside stimulus can increase or decrease the rate of the heart, and we'll talk about that after we get done, uh, but it does not depend on the nervous system to contract. So let's start off this cardiac conduction system. So this starts here in the sinoatrial node, or SA node. The SA node is a pacemaker, so it's specialized tissue in the wall of the right atrium that initiates cardiac cycles. It is autorhythmic. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna send impulses to surrounding areas, right, to surrounding cells. And so you're gonna get a wave of contraction that's gonna move from the left atrium, to, or from the right atrium to the left atrium, pushing blood down into the ventricles. Now, I say it's a wave of contraction, so if you were to watch a heart contract, and you, were, you, know, you wouldn't notice that the right atrium is contracting a little ahead of the left, if you slowed down that tape, you could see that the right atrium does, though. All right, so the H are gonna push blood down into the ventricles. And as I said, this is gonna happen, you know, the typical heart rate is 60, 100 times a minute. So what's gonna happen next is those impulses are gonna move down what is known as internodal pathway. So this is one node, there's another node. Inter means between. So these dotted lines here are trying to show this internodal pathway, all right? So the next node that we're gonna talk about here is the atrial ventricular node, also known as the AV node. Uh, it is also autorhythmic. Um, it can take over as a pacemaker uh, if the SA node goes bad, but it's not a good pacemaker. All right. So here, the fibers in the internodal pathway and also in the atrioventricular node are smaller in diameter. And what that does is it slows the impulse down. So it's like moving from a four-lane highway due to construction, it's down to two lanes. That slows up traffic, right? So the same thing here. So it delays this impulse. And what's good about that is it makes it so that the atria and the ventricles don't contract at the same time. All right, because what we want is blood to be moved down into the ventricles and then from the ventricles up and out of the heart. All right, so from here, from the AV node, uh, the impulse is gonna move into this and that's known as the AV bundle or the atrioventricular bundle. This is the only connection between the atrial and ventricular muscle cells. So even though there, you know, you see, you know, on the sides here, there's the atria, then there's the ventricle walls. Those muscle cells are not connected by gap junctions. And this is a really good thing because if we have a contraction here, we don't want that contraction moving on because that contraction would start at the top and work its way down. Well, there's no hole down here for the blood to move through. So that's why we don't want that to move through there. All right. 
So here, that impulse is going to move down that AV bundle. It's going to split in the uh, atrioventricular septum and then direct its way to the apex of the heart. All right. And here, uh, we get the Purkinje fibers. So these are going to conduct impulses from the uh, AV bundle into the ventricular walls. All right, so all these little fibers that we see here uh, are along there. All right, so here we're going to direct that, those impulses to the apex of the heart. This is the apex of the heart. It says so right there. All right, and so this is where contraction occurs. So contraction doesn't occur along that pathway yet until we get here. Once we get here, now we start contraction. So the contraction is going to move in an upward direction. So contraction starts at the bottom of the heart, moves upward. So that's going to help push blood up and out of the heart. Okay? And so that is a cardiac conduction, or uh, yeah, the cardiac conduction system. So we start off here with the SA node. It starts this impulse. It's going to spread that impulse across the atria. They're going to push, push blood down into the ventricles. Right, that impulse gets slowed down through the internodal pathway, an AV node, and then it's going to move along the AV bundle and then direct it here to the apex of the heart. And from here, it goes out to the Purkinje fibers, and they're going to cause this contraction, which pushes blood up and out of the heart. Now, something else about these heart muscle fibers is that they twist around here. All right, so what this does is our heart doesn't beat like this, it actually twists a little bit when it beats. All right, and by that little twisting action, that helps wring a little more fluid out of it. Just like, you know, if you uh, have a rag and you want to squeeze the fluid out, you know, you twist it. It gets more fluid out. All right, let's look at um, modifying the basic rhythm. All right, so one is through the parasympathetic division of our autonomic nervous system. So parts of our vagus nerve connect to both the SA and AV nodes, and here they're going to secrete acetylcholine. So that's going to decrease our uh, SA and AV node activity, and our heart rate decreases. So, uh, you know, so this is going to slow down the heart. Uh, the other is our sympathetic division of our autonomic nervous system. Uh, that goes to the, the, the spinal cord. So if you remember, the sympathetic division is our, uh, our four F's response. So that's fight, flight, freeze, and mating. Okay. So once again, this branches to the SA and AV nodes. And here we're going to secrete norepinephrine. So that's going to increase the force and the rate of contraction. Or as I always like to say, so, right, sympathetic division, bear comes in here, right? Your heart rate's going to increase because of that, right? So your fight or flight uh, and, uh, has, res, uh, has gone on. Your heart rate increases because of it, right? So if the bear stops, takes its head off, and it's your buddy Steve, and you're like, oh, Steve, I can't believe you got me yet again on this bear costume, uh, you know, your parasympathetic division is going to get your heart rate back down to normal. Okay, so also involved here is our medulla oblongata. So our medulla oblongata has our cardiac conduction center. Uh, so here, regions of our aorta are sensitive to stretching, right? So it's going to sense increases in blood pressure. Uh, and so it's going to interact with the, the cardiac conduction system and it's going to cause a decrease in our heart rate, which is going to decrease blood pressure. All right. Um, so also temperature change. So for warmer, we're going to have more heart rate, uh, colder, less heartbeats. Um, so.